Cordell Anderson, who will narrate spontaneously the combination of two 8mm movies made uh, during the first years, 1969-1970, on the Valparaiso Plantation in Alta Vera Paz, Guatemala, all prior to the organization of the Foundation for Indian Development, which is now called the Guatemalan Foundation. Uh, the first uh, movies were made by Bob Allen, uh, but then mixed uh, throughout and, and our movies also made by Lou Bernstein, who I'll mention in just a minute. But here we are going into the home of an Indian, a uh, typical Indian home, a rancho as they call them in Guatemala. Um, as you see, they were hauling water. They have no water in their homes and they have to usually go a long distance to get get good water. Uh, dirt floored homes, uh, uh, very simple, uh, no modern conveniences of any kind. This happens to be the home of Ricardo Paol. And you see his son, Hector, uh, who of course is a fine young man grown up now. Uh, uh, Ricardo um, was one of the first employees or colonos on the plantation, but uh, years later during the guerrilla war, he actually uh, became quite a rebel. I had uh, fired him because of drunkenness and because of abusing his family who didn't want uh, to be with him anymore. Uh, but to get even with me, he uh, led a, a rebel group of guerrillas uh, that broke into the house one night looking for me and uh, quite frankly uh, through pure miracles I was able to escape uh, being um, assassinated by them uh, which was their intention that night but here you see uh, Ricardo's mother making uh, tortillas uh, grinding the corn uh, you can see because of the open cooking fires a, a soot accumulates on the ceiling uh, which is made of uh, bamboo or carizo uh, up above that is where they stack their their um, their corn after harvest to dry it uh, with the uh, continual cooking fires uh, providing the heat uh, but you can see the uh, very very uh, unsanitary living conditions, uh, which has uh, more than half of their uh, their babies die before they reach the age of th three or four. Uh, and so here you see uh, the very, very hard life led led by by these these people. Uh, and we had 39 families like this that we all of a sudden were responsible for. And this is the, the family of our grandmother, Isabella Mash who was struggling to take care of some of her own children, along with some grandchildren, uh, among whom was Miguelito, you see here on the left. And we now get a close-up of Miguelito. He was two years old, had never been able to walk, and was uh, very sick, uh, malnourished. Uh, this is uh, Carlos. Uh, the other children you see in this, uh, in this movie all ended up losing their lives uh, because of uh, the infant mortality in Guatemala, and the grandma who just could not submit to uh, the, the kind of living necessary to save them. Now this is Elvira and Marta. Uh, these are uh, Miguelito's aunts. And here you see uh, the, uh, the typical uh, cottage uh, industry, I guess we can call it, of this area out of the maguey plant. They make twine. And here Carlos is, uh, providing the power to, to turn the wheel, uh, which uh, creates uh, opposite uh, twists in, in making the, uh, the twine. Uh, the twine then sometimes is sold just as twine uh, uh, to others who work uh, making nets out of it, like you see uh, Jose Maria Choc doing here. Uh, you can see the, uh, the type of construction of their homes. Um, uh, and firewood, of course, is a, is a daily need. Uh, and here you see Vicente, I believe it is, uh, with a huge load. Uh, we've, we estimated these loads oftentimes weighing as much as 150 pounds. Um, walking very gingerly down the road. Now, here you see the panoramic view. Uh, looking uh, towards the central house uh, and looking at the sugarcane fields. Uh, the uh, tan 
area is a uh, area that has been harvested already uh, and then uh, you see other sugar cane fields on the other side of the road in the area which where eventually we had our soccer field and which was in the very center of the plantation and it was sort of the last line of defense for an ancient fortified city which uh, was discovered that Valparaiso was that at one time a couple thousand years ago um, but here we are helping with the harvest. Uh, prior to us, they had to haul the sugar cane on their backs using a tump line. Uh, but we uh, increased production by helping with the transportation. And, uh, and now we will see next uh, the sugar refinery, very crude to say the least, with uh, the, the power driven, given by that 16 foot diameter water wheel uh, that turns the sugar crusher uh, you see Nicolas Hull here uh, putting the sugar cane into it uh, both him and his brother Marcelino and brother uh, um, Esteban uh, seem to dominate here uh, and eventually the, we caught them stealing panela and they went to jail and then one Sunday when when they were drunk uh, and attacked uh, our manager Miguel Angel, um, we we had to take more drastic action, and so uh, they were removed from the plantation. Uh, but I paid them for their uh, for their uh, homes and for their uh, plantings, which were on plantation land, so that they could establish themselves up in the village above the plantation. But the uh, juice goes down into the holding vat and then into the condensing vat, and they have to continually be. Uh, uh, looking at the consistency of it with, of course, fires underneath uh, to condense it down so that when it's at the right point, it's, it's uh, spooned out of here into a wooden trough. Uh, and then when it's uh, at the right stage of cooling, it is put into molds and uh, produce and made into panela, which are like bricks of uh, very dark brown colored bricks of uh, crude sugar which you see being packaged up here using the sugar candies themselves. But now uh, you will see uh, the first efforts of uh, to actually get electricity uh, other than through our portable generators. And so there's a, we installed a, purchased and installed a one cylinder, low revolution Lister diesel motor that you see here uh, with a uh, belt that goes way up uh, to an axle, or transmission as they call it in Guatemala, off of which uh, two belts uh, come down, one turning our generator on the left and the other one on the right at the hammer mill used to grind up uh, corn cobs and uh, corn and for, to make feed, etc. Uh, here we're seeing the, the central house. Uh, with an area in the middle it was a patio it's being covered over and that became our chicken dressing facility and then chick there's the sugar refinery up, up above um, and here's some of the people Federico Paul or Ricardo Ical uh, here comes Matilde um, uh, there was a little store there at the central house and so that attracted uh, people oftentimes uh, to come and, and make purchases uh, one of my first vocational students, uh, and a real good one, Santiago Calpop, uh, when he was 16 or 17, um, was going to get married uh, to 15-year-old Petronella, who, uh, uh, which is very common down there, and so I helped them uh, by providing transportation to town for the whole family. And so there's uh, people on both sides of the family that, uh, that came for the marriage. They came in the central house uh, to wait uh, for others to arrive, uh, and I sent uh, sent some boys to uh, to our warehouse to get uh, some benches uh, that uh, we were going to put in the trailer uh, for transportation. And so I. Uh, the women, we, we put them in the in the Jeep, Nissan Patrol, which was our second vehicle in Guatemala. We went with a uh, 
Ford, our Ford pickup. And there the men are in the back. Uh, so there's the, there's the area uh, transportation um, to town. And here they are getting out and uh, going into the mayor's office uh, who will perform the marriage ceremony. So this, uh, as far as I can uh, recall, is the first uh, time we helped in, in a marriage. Uh, and it was, of course, one of my young students. Uh, all of my vocational students were young men uh, who, if they wanted employment, they had to go, go through a period of training to learn how to work productively. And um, but here I am talking to uh, Richard Hodson, who accompanied Bob Allen on this trip. Uh, Dick had been my companion in the mission field in 1958 on the south coast of Guatemala. And so we've uh, been friends ever since. He was one of the founders of the foundation. Uh, he's the grandson of Hubie Brown, whose prophecy uh, helped stimulate my interest in returning to Guatemala to live. Here I am going uh, up the mountain to visit uh, the grandma and uh, Miguelito. Uh, I would uh, send them food every day. I would eat with them often. Uh, I uh, was doing my best to teach them. I got the toothbrushes and soap and all kinds of things. And we uh, built an outhouse uh, that you'll see in just a minute. But we finally decided the only way that we could really save these children would be to take them down to the take the whole family to our to the central house as part of our family. And that is is what we eventually did. Although the grandma just couldn't couldn't take the uh, <laughs> the conditions and the discipline, and and so she finally uh, just left us with Miguelito when he was very very sick and dying. Uh, Augustine there uh, uh, offered to be with us uh, to be a translator because all these children we were accumulating didn't speak any Spanish, and, and so Augustine was a big help to us uh, and. and grew up in the central house and uh, he not too many years ago passed on uh, uh, very sadly uh, but here's the first outhouse on the, on the plantation um, uh, we've given credit to Felipe La for the first one but this was actually the first one that we built for this family but here are, is our central house family growing there's Alponto and Leek there uh, Augustine and then Ruben and where David is there with me on behind, and then Julie jumped in the picture too. Uh, and so, and there's Rosalia, uh, Augustine's sister. And we also had, uh, as you'll see, Cecilia and Felisa, also of, uh, sisters of Augustine. So here's Margarita and Carmelina, and um, there goes Margarita, uh, Miguelito's aunt. Uh, and then uh, there's Christina. She's gathering up something. I'm not sure what. Uh, along with Joe, our first Guatemalan baby, uh, born on the 2nd of January in 1968. Uh, he today uh, has a wonderful family living in Pocatello, Idaho. He's a family counselor. Uh, and then we come to to Moncho. Uh, Victor Ramon Yat Valdez, who in uh, on the 22nd of January in 2017 became bishop of the uh, Valparaiso ward of the LDS Church, and so there is Moncho beginning his life, growing up with us, and there's his brother Ruben and Alfonso. And there's Ruben again, and I'll mention him in just a, just a minute. But here we are gathering the uh, first Central House family for its first portrait, which uh, is quite well known. There I am bringing Felisa. She didn't want to have her picture taken. I'm not sure, not sure why, because she always seemed to try and be very photogenic. Uh, but we have Maria Carmen on the right. Uh, uh, there's Miguelito's grandma behind. There's Miguel Angel Ortiz, who I'll mention in a minute. Um, Miguel Tull is also there right in the middle. Carlos. Um, and uh, and then we have a new baby ourselves. Um, Marcia, Elizabeth Anderson. 
you'll see her in just a minute but this is the famous first portrait of the uh, of the central house family and here is marcia or marcy as she calls herself i call her nita because she was my little queen my little renita now here comes ruben with richard uh, these two guys grew up to be incredible soccer players. They were both a part of Valparaiso's first championship soccer team in 1980. Richard eventually went to the United States to finish his studies at Provo High School along with uh, uh, David and Julie and uh, Christina. And uh, Richard became uh, an all-star soccer player in, in Utah and he still plays soccer in an adult league in uh, Arizona. Uh, so we're very proud of him. Uh, that picture though reminds us of the article in the Enzyme published in 1971 uh, with pictures of David, Ruben, and Richard arm in arm as pure brothers, no discrimination. Um, One of the, our creations in the first year or two was this lake. Um, it had been a swampy area, but we just decided to fill it up. And so we built a dam, a drainage system, um, and uh, eventually we were to uh, improve it a great deal uh, by raising the level and getting rid of a lot of water weeds, making it bigger, as you'll see in just a minute. Uh, but this became uh, a great place for uh, us to uh, swim, take our daily bath, and great fishing. Uh, eventually catching uh, Israeli carp up to 35 pounds. Uh, the largest uh, black bass was 8 pounds. Uh, and so uh, this lake was a great great source of enjoyment for us over the years as well as being quite productive. We always had fish to eat and eventually of course we created this nice swimming area with diving tower and diving board, change houses, uh, a waiting pool, etc. But uh, Valparaiso, the first law always was if you want to eat you've got to work and so everybody had to work. We all were learning um, more effective ways of working and being productive. Um, eventually we w were getting uh, 2,000 uh, broiler chicks like you see here every two weeks and so every two weeks we had to slaughter 2,000 uh, for sale in uh, in the surrounding towns and, and mainly in Coban where we eventually established a, a store that we ran for many, many years. And so uh, poultry was uh, a great source of income for us and much, much better than uh, the sugar uh, refinery. We eventually uh, eliminated that completely and turned the fields, uh, sugarcane fields into, uh, in one place a soccer field and, and other place a uh, extensive vegetable garden. And of course we had laying hens as you saw there, uh, and then the, here there's the chicken dressing, that's Julia on the left, that's uh, Aura's mother. And then there's uh, Feliz always uh, trying to flirt with uh, the cameraman apparently. And there's Chavela, and there's uh, Doña Carmelina, uh, Carlos, Ruben, and Moncho's mother, and other women. Uh, everybody that received help was expected to, to work as much as they could uh, to, to help cover what what they were receiving uh, and so work was very very important uh, this was uh, a little bit later actually uh, dressing uh, turkeys uh, this probably was a, a segment filmed by Lou Bernstein who joined us along with Liz his sister who is Bob Allen's uh, sister uh, Liz was uh, Lou's wife, of course, uh, and they joined us, and I'll mention a little bit more about them in just a minute, but we, uh, over the years, improved our chicken dressing uh, operation and uh, employed quite a few people in, in that. We also had uh, hog projects. Uh, uh, we 
had to keep everybody busy. Of course, we did have cattle. Uh, we had accumulated cattle from at the poultry farm in San Manchamelco. When we sold that farm, we drove the cattle overland here, and eventually, with the help of, uh, of good friends like Toby Pingree, who loaned us money, uh, we got into the uh, cattle business uh, on a larger scale, and eventually, uh, in 1972, established here at Valparaiso the largest dairy in northern Guatemala. That is what became our main source of uh, employment and of support for all the years. Here we are at the first school, uh, which was a, an old building that uh, eventually in the, in the earthquake in 76, it got destroyed. But here are Julie and Christina are playing with the Indian girls. Of course, you could see me there teaching the boys uh, about tumbling. And uh, But we first employed Suel Gomez as our first teacher and uh, but he only had third grade education himself and so for the second year we had to find somebody a little bit better prepared and we found a young man uh, but here we had an outhouse uh, well just barely saw it there uh, for the school uh, but we employed a young man by the name of Ramundo who, who didn't work out too well he just was too sophisticated he wouldn't get down to the level of the indians and they they just couldn't understand him so here i am paying paying him off and then we had to go find a new teacher here i am with dick hudson again and uh, and some from the plantation like uh, Frederick ball uh you'll see me wearing a white shirt and tie along with uh, with dick uh, i hadn't learned yet the the, the Rural Indians usually don't trust people that are dressed in white shirts and ties. They, it reminds them too much of, of slick liars and politicians that always are taking advantage of them. And so I finally learned to dress a little bit more simply and, and be trusted more by the by the Indian. Here comes Richard. Uh, but at the school, uh, uh, our new teacher, Liliana, who uh, is having a literacy class with the women, we arranged work schedules always so that anybody that wanted to go to school uh, and learn to read and write and arithmetic uh, could do so. So here the women are in their class, uh, with Doña Carmelina, Ruben, Carlos, and Moncho's mother, there's Cecilia, and then uh, we have, uh, I think we, we see Elvira here to the right that we'll zero in on right now, who is Miguelito's aunt, uh, learning how to read and write for the first time in her life. And then uh, we move over uh, on the to the right, and, uh, and we will see again uh, Felisa, who became a very, very important woman in the history of Alparizo, a woman of great faith. Um, who uh, was greatly appreciated over, over the years. Uh, here we are with the with the kids, um, and the, the boys uh, jumped in the car first, and I kicked them out, trying to teach them that, no, we've got to be gentlemen. We've got to let the women in first. And so then uh, Alfonso and, and Carlos, after the women are in there, then they went, jumped in. Uh, and so there we are uh, going off uh, actually what was a mound uh, in that side hill of, after we clean uh, cleared it of timber and mowed it we could see that it was the uh, it was uh, part of the ancient fortified city but here we are in uh, our feed to our house in meetings. We started, we always had a family hour every day in the, in our, in the central house, devotional with just my family in the morning. Uh, this happened to be a mutual meeting that we started holding at night. And we would uh, show movies and film strips and, and uh, do things that were, were fun for the, for the people and educational. Uh, but here, but this is a mutual song that's being being sang, as you'll see. It's not exactly the kind that you'd sing in the Sunday meeting. Uh, but here, uh, the prayer is going to be offered by Miguel Mash, 
who was the outstanding student uh, at 16 years old, and Beric soon became a supervisor and helped me in teaching others. Uh, he learned so quickly, uh, and it was so important in everything that we did. Uh, there's hardly anybody in my whole experience in Guatemala who was more important than and than Miguel Mach, and he eventually became uh, my counselor in the district presidency uh, years years later. And he was the manager of the plantation at the same time and president of the cooperative. But here we are uh, in a meeting. Uh, it was with a group like this that uh, when Dr. Carl Jacob as a uh, mission counselor came to have a conference in, in the Coban area, 70 people uh, attended here and then he went to Coban and only seven came, uh, attended in Coban and so the branch from Coban was moved to the plantation among these people. Well here we see Lou Burton and his wife Liz on the left in the back. back. Um, they, they came and were with us for a few months and, and helped a great deal. Uh, Lou eventually passed on, but but uh, here's their vehicle. And there was one time when we, uh, with his vehicle and mine, um, filled with the Central House family, we all made a trip to Kunin to visit Aurora and Jim Penrod and the Ayuda Project. Uh, that was in one of my uh, traveling movie towns and so uh, this movie here was made by Lou and it actually had a recording uh, but it was on a separate cassette and that cassette has been lost and so uh, if you're having to uh, put up with me n narrating this but here is the uh, the Central House family and this would have been like in 1970 and so here you will meet everybody uh, first of all, uh, Maria, along with our newest baby, Marcy, or Nita, or Renita. Uh, and then next comes uh, uh, my uh, right-hand man, uh, David, who just loved to work. And, and oh, he did incredible things. Uh, at a, uh, just as an eight, nine-year-old young guy with a whole bunch of Indian boys as his uh, work companion. Then there's Julie, who was the first volunteer, started uh, education with six little barefoot Indian children uh, as part of her class. And there's Augustine, who came to help and then remained with us for many years. And then there's uh, Rosalia, who years later uh, became a big help to us again. And then uh, Margarita, uh, Miguelito's aunt, and uh, uh, Arnoldo, uh, uncle of Miguelito, and then there's Alfonso, that's uh, you've got to be the next one to come, uh, also one of Miguelito's uncles. Miguelito eventually uh, came to the United States uh, on an adoption when he was ten and a half years old. And here Miguelito is in the arms of his aunt Elvira. And then comes um, our, um, Alfonso and his uh, brother uh, Lake. They were the first two uh, Indian children actually that, that came to live with us and grew up with us and uh, Leek became the first professional to uh, graduate uh, as a public, a certified public accountant. And here's Richard, our soccer star. And I should mention that David was also an all-star soccer player in high school. And there's Christina who became the first, a few years later, the first uh, welfare service district missionary in, in the history of Guatemala. And then there's our first Guatemalan baby, Joe. And then there's Bishop Moncho. And his brother, Ruben. And then uh, the big brother, Carlos, who uh, later on became uh, 
uh, a branch president of the LDS Church for a period, and then he became the manager of the plantation right up to the end. And then his mother, uh, Doña Carmelina, who is, has passed on a few years ago. And then Cecilia, who Augustine's sister, uh, sister of Felisa and uh, Rosalia, who grew up with us in Central House and had her first baby uh, um, with, at the Central House. And there's Carmelina. And next comes uh, Maria Carmen, who uh, eventually uh, went back to wearing her Indian clothes and, and was put in charge of our store in Colbana and was in charge of it for many years right up to the end. An incredible worker and employee. And then our teacher, Liliana, who uh, Miguel Angel fell in love with, and that kind of screwed him up in his employment for a while until there was a while when he left. But uh, Miguel Angel came to me when, when I was in dire need of help, and he was just, it was just like manna from heaven. And we worked together and learned together, and uh, I've actually called him my first student, but uh, he became manager of the plantation when he was only 18 years old. Um, and so he was an incredible guy, and he owns his own plantation now north of Coban. Uh, then uh, to end here, we see the central house in our uh, evening uh, family hour. We would sing, and we would uh, uh, see a movie or a film strip, or uh, um, or just read um, together. Uh, we would do something uh, every every night. And in the mornings, I would have a devotional just with my own family. Uh, and so here we are singing. It's too bad we've uh, lost the the uh, audio. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> we did pretty good, actually, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, so we we actually had uh, had a lot of good times in the in the central house. Uh, and the family grew to 30 to 40 we even had as many as 50 at, at times uh, with people that we were treating uh, for sickness and uh, needy mothers uh, uh, escaping abusive husbands uh, uh, Young people who were juvenile delinquents that were assigned to us by the court because they were too young to be to put in jail. And so we had all kinds of people there at the central house. And here at the end of all of this, apparently I uh, um, I gave some kind of a speech at the end of Lou Burton's uh, uh, movie, uh, and um, it's been lost now. And so you just have to imagine that. Uh, that I'm saying how wonderful an experience now plus I was to be able to be there and, and this was just in the very beginning and there my Zenith portable, portable radio is on the left <laughs> my touch with the world